Well, it's an honor to be with you tonight. My husband, Hal, take a, take a stand, Hal. We've been married 45 years, and uh, we've both served 20-year careers in the Air Force. We have two... Consider the Air Force, right? Oh no. I'm going to be a Marine. I said, why is that? He said, the Air Force is too soft. <laughs> now, my father uh, was an Army officer. I'm, I'm fifth generation career military. And when my father swore me in at the end of ROTC, at Michigan State University back in the day. Uh, he still fit his uniform and he looked so sharp. And one of my little friends came up to him and said, well, sir, are you disappointed that your daughter is going into the Air Force, not the Army? And he said, are you kidding me? I'm just glad she got a job. <laughs> so I, I started out as a, a psychiatric social worker in the Air Force, which is a little known fact, worked in mental health, and uh, decided, well, maybe I'd like to take some flying lessons and see if being a pilot in the Air Force is uh, a path to follow. And I took some lessons at the base, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Dayton, Ohio, and went to pilot training out in Arizona. Uh, Hal and I were married, and we went together, and he went to graduate school at Arizona State, which has had its uh, woke moments in recent weeks, but we won't get into that. And, uh, and I went to pilot training. Fast forward, uh, I got a C-141 jet transport, which was all that women could fly at the time because women were precluded from combat roles. And uh, I flew that many years worldwide. And then we went to the Air Force Academy, and, and we had our son, and then later moved to Germany and had our daughter. And that's a real interesting, quick story. Uh, Persian Gulf War I was about to happen. And there I was, age 36, out to here. And they said, well, uh, and many of you have heard of Landstuhl Hospital in Germany, which is where she was born. And they said, uh, if you have your child during the hostilities, we didn't know when it was going to begin, and she was born in September, uh, you will come to this hospital, have your child, go home, and then come back in a few days and pick the child up. Because we don't do OBGYN during wartime. This is a burn unit. I said, okay. Anyway, she was born and it all worked out. But this is the role that women, we are so lucky and honored to be able, I think all of us are of a generation where we appreciate, we're not entitled, we appreciate being citizens of this fine country. We appreciate to serve, and we appreciate and love our families, and hold our families near and dear to our hearts. And so you say to me, well, how did you get from Air Force pilot to Arizona senator? A little bit of a journey there. I retired from the Air Force, we bought a business, 
and we had this business, a home inspection company, for 23 years. And after our son and daughter moved out of the home and had their own lives, I began to look to other ways to serve. So I decided to run for office. And at the time, we were living in the Phoenix area, Tempe, Arizona, which is pretty liberal now. And uh, I started riding my bicycle door to door. And I would show up all bedraggled and sweaty, and they'd say, who are you? And I'd say, I'm going to be your state senator. And I would get their, I would get their signatures. In Arizona, you don't pay $30,000 to get on the ballot. And I would go to the door and they'd say, you're the candidate. How, how did you find me? And I'd say, well, you know, you vote. That's in a computer program. And I have GPS. So I would find them. And I had all these stories of going door to door. You know what is so special about going door to door? You're on the voter's doorstep. You're on, you're in the voter's territory and they will tell you everything like I'd love to have my wife sign your petition but she's in the shower and I'd say here it is take it to her in the shower and bring it back to me I got several signatures that way one story I'll never forget it was it was dusk I was on my bike I had my it was chilly believe it or not in Arizona and I had my flight jacket on from the Air Force days. And this guy came to the door and he said, uh, yeah, I was in the military. And I said, oh, great, tell me about that. And he said, well, I'm the son, I was the son of a dad who had a terminal illness early in life, as did his brothers. So I figured I was a marked man. So I went into special forces. I was, you know, the proverbial snake eater. I, I was jump qualified, I took the toughest assignments, I repelled out of helicopters, I did all this, you know, really rough, tough stuff. After 10 years, I got out of the Army, and I went into the SWAT team police force, and I kicked down doors, and I did all this really tough, rough stuff. And then, I kept not dying. <laughs> and I said, oh, and he said, you know, and I looked at the roster, it was paper back then, and I could see he was in his 60s, and I, I was listening you know, with rapt attention, and he said, do you know what I just found out two years ago? I said, no. He said, I was adopted. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, from the back of the house, I heard this cranky wife saying, Clarence, who are you? And then when we hold off, 